So I just uh, launched Pico 8 on the Mac OS and it brings up uh, this interface. Now if you press Option Return, it goes to full screen. So I'll do that for now. So this is basically like a terminal in the Pico 8, which is a virtual video game console and developing environment. So you have to kind of use terminal commands to navigate. So ls gives you your directory, and this is in the Pico 8 directory. And then you can cd, change directory to get into any of these specific directories. And actually, let's go look at some of the games that came with it. And, and so these are some of the games that came with it. If you'd like to load a game, just do load and so it loaded the game and if you press command R it should run it. So here we have a game open. Go ahead and quit out of that. Now you can also if you press escape it goes between the the terminal, I guess, the game console and the development environment. And any of these games also have uh, the code available. And you have these different tabs for different parts of the developing environment, which is really nice. It's all, it's all built in. You can use external editors also, but you don't have to. It's all built in. So this is your code. And these are your sprites. These are your um, tile maps. And I'm holding a space bar to get the hand to move around. And these are sound effects. And this is uh, for music. You can make music using patterns. So let's close out of that. And let me see. Let's back out of this. And I'm going to show you uh, make things on Pico 8. So I have um, this RPG I'm working on. It's just beginning. And let's go ahead and open that. Yes. And <laughs> there's nothing really yet. It just has a name and um I'm just, you know, working on it. But I'll show you some some basic easy things you can do. So press escape and press escape again. And so these are the main built-in functions for Pico 8. The init, the update, and the draw. And Pico 8 uses Lua, which is, in my opinion, a lot like C. It's pretty minimal, in my opinion. Um, so the init is like a, a start function in Unity. And then you have the update, which, um, which runs every frame, which updates the the game states and you have this draw function which updates the graphics and then here you have these sprites again only have two sprites and you'll notice this number here and this is the number of the sprite that's referenced in your code so for example i have this show mage function now you can also add these tabs which basically help you organize your, your code. And basically everything on, on these tabs is, is basically one long, uh, one long file. It's just a way to break it up. So you don't have to do any kind of includes or you don't have to link these different tabs. They're already one big file. So I have this function right here. And this is show mage function. And it basically draws a sprite, the SPR, draws a sprite, and it draws it at, draws 
whichever sprite. So this draw is zero. So this is the zero, the mage sprite. And the knight sprite is one. So sprite zero. And this is the x and y coordinate. And then um, to print text, you just put a print, the text in quotes, and then the x and y coordinate. And I have a show function or show warrior function also. And it draws the number one sprite, which is this guy. And then the same thing, you can print this text. And I have a, a function for show stats. And I'll print the health. And this is how you concatenate. And I have this, um, this table. And tables are kind of like classes, I think, in, um, in Lua. So I have the create mage function. And the mage is a table. And you can tell it because it has these uh, curly brackets. And I'm creating this mage, and it has a health, defense, and attack. And these are all variables. Uh, you don't have to specify the type. And so to reference these, these variables, you just use the, the dot notation. So the mage dot health, mage dot defense, mage dot attack. And I'm going to press Control R, and you can all see that again. Um, I'm not going to go into the tile maps or the sound for this one to keep it really simple. Let's go ahead and create one more, one more sprite just to see how this works. Let's create a... Um, do I already have a, a wizard? And we have a, a warrior. Um, let's get some kind of like cleric. Probably have some kind of white robe. Or a white helmet. And let's give it a gray. It's got some kind of gray veil. And then we'll give them some eyes too. Give them some pink eyes. And maybe that videos. Maybe we'll just make the whole thing white. Keep it simple. No, that was kind of weird. Yeah, it looks like a ninja, but it's okay. We'll just use that for now. That's fine. Maybe put some kind of red cross on him. I don't know. <laughs> Make him look, look like a nurse. But you do get the idea that it's some kind of healer. So let's do this. That was cool. It's kind of weird, but it's cool. So we have a... This is an... Uh, index O2 sprite and we're gonna just make a show show cleric function and you don't need to use curly brackets just use the end to end your function and we do sprite number two next is gonna be zero and I'm not exactly sure how far to go down. Let's try, let's try 80. And print cleric 10, 80. It looks like I need, oh no, it looks okay. So we're going to save that, press Command S and Command R. And it didn't work. Oh, yeah, because we didn't call the function. So we created the function, and now we need to call it in our draw function. So show cleric. 
save and run. Oh, there it is. So that's how you add a sprite, and that's how you add text. Um, I could go back and fix the the spacing and all that later. So that's that. Uh, one other thing I want to show you is that you can use external editor for this. So save that. And let's uh, get out of uh, full screen mode. Press Option Enter. And we'll open up Visual Studio Code. And I've already got it open up to another one. What you can do is go here. Go to Open Folder. And I've got a Pico 8 folder set up. And you go to Carts. And I saved it in my cart. And then RPG. You can open. And then here you can edit your your code in a code editor. And so you'll you'll notice that these extra tabs have been just uh, added here. And this stuff here is uh, all for the graphics, so you don't want to mess with that. But here's all your code. And what you can do also is you can add um, different documents. So I have another file here. for this other game I was working on. And the P8 file has, um, you can do these includes, which will include these other Lua files. And that'll help for more organization or for code reuse. And so this is your main P8 file that runs, and then you just in, you can just include these other files. So the last thing I'll show you is starting a whole new. Let's just start a whole new. Um, a whole new thing. I'm not sure how you reset. It comes with documentation. Let's see a manual. Um, comes with documentation. So I'm not sure where it is, but let's just uh, we'll just quit and start again. How about that? I'll keep it simple. Okay. And so now you have a uh, an empty. Now you have an empty program. Let's see where we're at. So we're in this uh, main Pico8 directory that gets created when Pico8 is installed. So let's go to my cards. And let's make a new directory. It's mkdr. Now there it is. And you can do cd new. And there's nothing there, so that's good. So we can uh, can start a new, whole new program. So I don't remember <laughs> all the stuff. I guess you'd probably want to work from the previous document or or copy and paste. But we can just do a print. Hello world. And let's see if that works. We'll do a command S to save it. And we'll run it. And there we go. Hello world. And let's do, let's get a little fancy here. Let's do a uh, clear screen. Oh, clear screen after. So CLS is the clear screen. So clear screen, it says hello world. And let's do a quick sprite. And so this is sprite number one. Let's go back here. And SVR draws a sprite. Sprite one. Let's do it 10, 10. Keep it simple. And save it and run. Boom. So hope this helps. This is a 
basic introduction to getting started with PicoA. And take care.